this is going to be an interesting side project. Um, none of the capacitors have been replaced in this unit. And as this unit is a capacitor tester and leak down tester, as you know, the IT11, I had just received a shipment from Dave. I've been dealing with him for many years. I asked for some specific requirements for the capacitors, uh, those which uh, need to be within 1%. I know the smaller one he always ships as uh, um, the specific capacitor is going to be uh, 1%. Uh, I can't see which one it is. Um, one of those. Uh, however, he went and, and uh, was able to provide me a couple of other ones. I believe it's going to be this uh, 203 right here. Uh, this one's 104. It's not it. This is a, a 503. The 205 right there. So three capacitors within the tolerance that I require and some other caps that I'm going to be replacing. Um, the interesting thing is when I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the capacitors that I pulled out of this and once I have all the precision caps and I'm going to test those caps on this unit. I'm also going to include my uh, my uh, microammeter to uh, also see what, what the leak down is what leak down current is at the rated voltage for these capacitors. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Small job. Replace them, have these ones in there, throw these on the table, and then hook it up to the test set and see what we're actually getting out of them. So here we are one day later. Uh, all of the capacitors have been uh, swapped out, the ones that I was working on. And here they are. These are the ones from the unit, from that domino. We got some papers all the way up to uh, the two electrolytics back there. Here's my precision ones that I took out. You can see the black one there and the yellow one are within 1%. It's 1, 2, and this big one right here is 3. I replaced a couple caps up here that are not part of the, the testing circuit, but still part of the, the unit. And um, over here as well, we have uh, two new electrolytics that replace those bad boys right there. And... Uh, the paper cap was removed to replace that one. I didn't replace this one or the two on the power supply yet. And the reason is because I ordered the wrong ones. So it's not really that important right now, but it's just good to know. So now we're going to put this thing together and test it out. Interesting, the first thing I noticed was the uh, Magic Eye Tube is, is a lot brighter than it was before. It's it's almost hard to see on camera now um, where where the uh, the different shades are which is a very good thing from, from where I'm sitting. But I have my, obviously, before I, I test mold capacitors, I'm going to use my, my standard reference. And this is a 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor. I have it on the uh, 0 0.01. And I'm sorry, this is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. My mistake. And, and I have the scale on 0 0.01. So I should read an indication at 1, 1 times 0 0.01 being 0 0.01. And... Let's just do that, and we'll just come right to it as we approach 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually look away from the camera for a second to get exactly where the drop is. Right there. Oh, it's right on the money. So we know that the X01 uh, setting is good, so we're going to try the uh, another value for another setting. Here's an 8 microfarad capacitor that I tested on my modern unit at about 7.5, 7.6, and I have the setting on the one times, so we'll move it up towards 8. We should probably get 7.5. Just over 7.5 right there. Bring it down some. There it is, 7.5. Okay, so the X1 setting is good. Now we'll try the 0, 0, 0, 001. Here's 102 on the scale of uh, 0 0, 0.001. So that should read 10. I'm not going to uh, tune it in, but you could. Well, it was actually uh, on this unit reading uh, 9.5. So what I actually ended up with right here. Is just about nine and a half. So I'm going to call the uh, capacitor testing portion of this unit done. What we're going to do is we're going to take the capacitors 
that we just removed now that we know that these measurements are good. And we're going to measure the capacitors from this unit on this unit, as well as the leak down test for all the capacitors. I'm starting a calibration of this unit today. Uh, the first instruction shows that I should bring the uh, uh, shorted current through a resistor to 2 milliamps for electrolytic, 2,000 microamps, and that's the point it should open. And I've hooked up my little trusty Radio Shack kit here. So I'm able to get exactly what I need. So if I move this dial right here, I'm going to move it now. And you can see as I move it, the current drops, the eye opens, and then we raise the current and the eye closed. So ideally, it should just come closed at 2 milliamps. Right now we're at 237. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this down to we're at 2. Um, it's a little difficult to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and adjust the potentiometer in here that corresponds to the first value. And I'm going to go through all of them and do this until I have the exact settings that I'm looking for. Now I've adjusted the uh, mini-lytic position, uh, which will start showing uh, closed position at 15 microamps. And that one has been set up by uh, adjusting the AB on the bottom there. So that one is done. The last setting is for paper and mica and what have you. And it is uh, calibrated to be in the closed position at 2 microamps. And right now I've set that up, and I've set up the, uh, the Rio stat for that value. So now we should have everything configured and ready to go. I have a setting to get is the paper and mica, but I think it's most important because regardless of what capacity you put on here, you really want to want to see if there's any leakage, and not by the standards of the 1950s, but by actual current flow. Now it's been kind of difficult here, but I've been setting up these three separate potentiometers plus some uh, added 1.8 meg resistance on here. But this is at a lower voltage. It's easiest to, to test these at the lowest voltage possible. This which is basically just a parameter for deciding a pass or fail based on the type of capacitor. And I guess back in the, uh, in the 40s and 50s, an electrolytic capacitor that leaked 2 milliamps or less was considered to be a good capacitor. Uh, not by today's standards. Uh, the mini-lytic uses the same test but says 15 microamps or less is good. And the paper, mica, etc. is 2 microamps. So basically, if we wanted to know at what point these capacitors were leaking, we could just look at the parameter of the test and see how far the eye opened, and that will give us an indication. So we're going to test the first one. This is rated for 350 volts DC. So we're going to turn that up. I'm going to start at 300, just under it. And we're going to set it to leakage. And as you can see, the test is closed. That means it is definitely leaking more than 2 microamps at 300 volts. I'm not even at the maximum voltage, but we'll just stay here right now. So let's see if it's leaking 15 microamps. And it is, in fact, leaking more than 15 microamps. And is it leaking more than 2 milliamps? No. So... Interestingly, we could, okay, see it's charging. So this capacitor is leaking less than two milliamps, but more than 15 microamps, which, which tells me that it's no good. But it's an interesting way they measured this, the, the criteria for pass and fail back then, because any capacitor that was leaking two uh, milliamps to me would be considered no good. In working with the test set, I came up with pretty much the best way to tell uh, the quality of the capacitor. And basically what I want to know is, is it leaking any DC? So if I put it on the the, uh, uh, the criteria for 2 microamps, and you can see that at 3 volts it's not leaking anything. But we'll crank it up and we'll see at what point it starts leaking over 2 microamps. 6 is good, 10 is good, 15 is good, 25 is good, 50 is good. And at 100 it starts leaking 2 microamps, but is it leaking 15 microamps at 100? So we flip up to the next switch, and it is not leaking 15, or it's not leaking uh, uh, 15 microamps at 100. So we'll turn it up to 150, and it looks like at 150 volts, it's leaking more than 15 microamps. So just by using this tester, we could get pretty much exactly how much leakage we're getting in current across the capacitor at what voltage. As an example, another one that I pulled out of the unit was 0.5 microfarad at 200 volts. 
and it did read on the meter, which I had to set for, for just under 0.5. So the capacitance was reading correctly. I've set up my voltage for 200. And when I flip the switch, you're going to watch it charge very quickly and then open back up even on the paper mica setting, which means that there's less than two microvolts. Actually, probably there's no actual leakage across this, this capacitor. Just like that. Now, when you discharge it, you'll actually watch the eye close as, as the current moves backwards and then opens up really quickly. But um, that is a good capacitor. So this was this was one to hold on to. Uh, you figure the eye is fully closed at two microamps. So by the time the eye fully opens up with no silhouette, you're looking at you know zero to some unbelievably small amount. Here's another one, 0 0.05, measuring it on the scale here, x.01, pretty much right on 5, so that capacitor reading is good. If I move it away, see it goes up. Now let's go and run 200 volts through it and see what we get. And this is on the mica scale, so we're looking at 2 microamps or less. Ready? Very nice. So. There is no there is no DC flowing across this capacitor. This capacitor is good. We'll discharge. We'll charge again. And that's it. Everything looks good. Here's the two micro microfarad capacitor, the domino cap that was the reference for C uh, X to the time zero 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 one. And this one always fares better than the paper and electrolytics. And it did work although it wasn't perfect. I mean, it was the only one that I could get a reading on. So now I'm measuring this and I'm finding that this one was still in the ballpark. You could see that it's reading about 25% higher than it should be, but still 25% at least get you on the scale. You know, the other one's reading twice as much and it just it was, it was off the charts. So there's the mica. Now let's run some voltage through it. I'm going to run 200 like everything else. Well, the other one's rated for 200 and sat in the same circuit, so it stands to reason. So we'll see what happens. And yeah, ran good, no leakage. Discharge, charge it again. That was really quick. Very good. So that micro was still good, but uh, definitely not suitable as a as a reference capacitor for reference uh, uh, values. But still good as far as capacitor goes.